Good morning. Good to be with you today as we uh, continue our study today because we celebrate this most significant uh, day in the Christian year. We celebrate Easter. Uh, we are going to study today in the 28th chapter of Matthew where we pick up in the first verse and uh, continue virtually through the chapter. But 28.1 begins uh, with Paul writing this. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Now there are several things that are significant here. And the first is that we don't know, although other uh, gospels record this to be Mary, the mother of James, but these two women were going to the tomb. They had followed uh, Jesus. Uh, they knew him. They loved him. They were uh, followers uh, throughout his ministry. And so they had seen, because they were at the cross, they saw uh, where he was buried. They were familiar with uh, the tomb that, that Joseph uh, had donated for the purpose of Jesus' burial. So they had gone because they had uh, thought that additional uh, spices and perfumes uh, would need to be added to the body to prepare it for burial. So they went to complete that chore. It's interesting too also that these are women that, that are going to the tomb because in that culture at that time, if you were going to have a witness to a, an event, you would not choose women because their testimony would not be believed. Yet in Matthew's account, we see these two women uh, going to the tomb uh, to continue to prepare uh, Jesus' body. And it was after the Sabbath, and the Jewish Sabbath ran from noon or from sunset on Friday till sunset on Saturday. So this was early on Sunday morning. And if we look at verses 1 through 4, if we were going to give a title, a subtitle to this section of Scripture, we would perhaps say, struck with awe. And we'll see as we go through this just how totally unreal uh, this uh, must have appeared to these women. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Now, this stone that was in front of this tomb uh, was round, and it was probably uh, as tall as the average man and perhaps a foot thick. It was very heavy. And so I'm sure that the women, as they were, they were heading out that early um, Sunday morning, wondered how on earth they were going to be able to move uh, this stone uh, from the front of, of the tomb so that they could continue to prepare uh, Jesus for burial. And there was a violent earthquake. Uh, this perhaps moved the stone. Uh, perhaps the angel moved the stone. Uh, this messenger of God. Uh, but in any event, the stone was rolled back and the angel sat on the stone. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. So this is more evidence, if you will, of a heavenly presence. So whiteness, brightness, lightning uh, were all a part of 
the description of the presence of God. So we see these women then going to the tomb, finding it open, and guards were there, a couple of guards. Uh, they were guarding the tomb so that the Jews or uh, other supporters, believers, uh, followers of Jesus uh, could not fake a resurrection, could not uh, carry off the body of Jesus. And so there were guards there, and these were Roman guards. They were trained soldiers. They were stout and sturdy men. The guards, it says in verse 4, were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Now this, I think, is the polite way of saying they fainted in the presence of this. And, and only in Matthew's gospel do we have this uh, description and this uh, information about, about the guards. So they were so shocked, so overcome by the presence of, of the angels that, that they fainted. And then in verse 5, uh, perhaps if we look at verses 5 through 7 as a, as a separate section, if we wanted to subtitle it, uh, we would say perhaps, come and see. So, the first is in awe, uh, come and see being the second section. And then in verse 5, Paul writes, The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Do not be afraid. Certainly the women... Uh, going out early in the morning, didn't expect to see any of this stuff. And they were uh, afraid, of course, they would naturally be afraid by the presence of the Roman guard, of the angel, of the tomb stone being rolled away. And, and Paul writes uh, that the angel said, do not be afraid, for I know what you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus who was crucified. And verse 6, He is not here. He is risen, just as He said. Come and see the place where He lay. So the, the stone had been moved not to keep Jesus in, but so the women could see. They could be the witnesses to his resurrection. Come and see, they said. And I think that's very appropriate as we look at Scripture because the writers of Scripture are saying to us through these words, come and see the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the truth of his almighty power, the truth of He being God's Son who came to the world to save us from our sins. He is not here. He is risen, just as He said. So we see here truth in prophecy, truth in Scripture. Then, go quickly and tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Mark's gospel records this, uh, this scene uh, with the angel saying, just as he told you, just as he said. So the angel is reciting, if you will, uh, exactly what prophecy had foretold, that Jesus would be resurrected, he told them he would be, and now that proof has come to pass. So come and see, the angel invited the 
the women, Mary and Mary the mother of James. He is risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you to Galilee. Now Galilee, that area was a very uh, important part of the narration of uh, Matthew's gospel. This is where his ministry was centered and he, uh, in the scene uh, uh, on the Sea of Galilee where he walked on water and uh, around the border of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, Capernaum, which was there. And uh, so it was a, a very important part of his ministry. And so we have then verses 8 to 10, go and tell. So the women hurried away from the tomb, yet were filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. It's interesting emotion that these women were experiencing, uh, filled with fear, yet filled with joy. Uh, it must have been thinking, gosh, uh, one saying to the other, is this really true? Did this really happen? I know we heard about it, but did Jesus really rise from the dead? Is the angel right? Surely, maybe, hopefully, suddenly, we read in verse 9, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. This first Sunday worship. Clasping his feet and bowing down before him on one's knees was a typical form of worship in those days. And so the women following tradition, seeing Jesus, recognizing Jesus, they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. And here is that term again. You know, it's going to be okay. Don't be afraid. Said, yes, I am Jesus. Yes, I have risen. So he said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There I will see them. It's very interesting that, that he said go to Galilee, which was a large area. Uh, the Sea of Galilee was uh, 13 miles long and four miles across, and there were many communities around the Sea of Galilee, but he says, go to Galilee, there they will see me. And he said, talking about his brothers. Now, it's interesting that he didn't call them disciples, but call them brothers, a very affectionate term. Now, these were the brothers that had gone to sleep when he'd asked them to stay awake and pray. Uh, these were the brothers that had deserted him when, when uh, he was arrested. Uh, these are the brothers that, that, uh, that uh, denied him in front of witnesses. Uh, yet he loved them, and he called them brothers. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There I will see them. So here we see the, the kind of the culmination of the resurrection scene. And, and he says, go to Galilee. So the women made this probably 70-mile uh, trip uh, to Galilee. And I want to skip down now to verse 16 where we talk about the, the Great Commission. And verse 16, Paul writes, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. 
So this was a favorite place that they knew. It's not identified here for us. It could be uh, where he delivered the Sermon on the Mount. It could be uh, the scene where the transfiguration uh, took place. Uh, Paul just did not uh, share it with her, or Matthew didn't share it with her with us here in this gospel. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go, a favorite place. Um, when they saw him, Matthew continues in verse 17, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Now I don't, I don't think this means doubted as no it can't be true but I think Matthew was saying uh, maybe they were hesitant maybe they just weren't sure maybe they didn't quite understand the significance of what they were seeing they were seeing Jesus in a resurrected form they they had known he had been crucified so hesitant maybe I'm not quite sure. And then in verse 18 it says, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now if we go back to the seventh chapter of Daniel and we look at the 13th uh, and 14th verse, In my vision at night, Daniel is writing, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days, this would be God, and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations, peoples, men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So this authority that Daniel wrote about, we see here being given to Jesus. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So we see here a point where we have to look at Jesus and say, who is he? Maybe this was the hesitation on the part of the brothers, the disciples. Uh, perhaps it was Ron that said in a sermon, he is either a lunatic or a liar or he is Lord. And if he is Lord, as we believe, then we must obey. Verse 19 says, therefore, and this we often uh, understand as the Great Commission. So Matthew writes in verse 19, therefore, because of what's happened, because of what I've said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Now let's just unpack that a little bit. Go and make disciples of all nations. This is everyone. This is, this is all people, whether white, black, Auburn, all people, all nations, go make disciples of them, baptizing them. Uh, that is by immersion. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything, not just some of the things that 
that we might agree with, some of the things that don't put us out of the way much, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, what we find in Scripture, God's instructions about how to conduct our lives and, and uh, how we should uh, reflect Jesus in our lives. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. The age, the end of the age would, of course, uh, perhaps be the, the uh, end times when Christ returns, his second coming. But the point is, don't quit until he comes, for he is with us. He has given us the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all the nations. And I pray this Easter Sunday, this most special day in the Christian calendar, that you will be obedient to the Great Commission. Be in church, invite people to come to church, share the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful for this lesson today that we found in Matthew's Gospel. We thank you, Father, that, that it has been shared with us. Uh, we are thankful, Father, for your Son, Jesus, that was given that we might live. Uh, Father, we Thank you for your presence in our lives uh, and pray that, that uh, for those that are uh, in the hospital or su suffering from illness or injury, or, we pray your mercy upon them. We pray for our churches and its leaders uh, on this special uh, Sunday and during this special Holy Week. Uh, Father, we pray for the people of Ukraine that you might shelter them, that you might protect them. I'm reminded of the story of David and Goliath, and, and I just pray that as you use David to defeat uh, the giant, I pray that you would be on the side of Ukraine. Uh, Father, I, I pray for our government leaders. I pray for uh, uh, that you would lead them and guide them and, and inspire them to follow you. Uh, Father, it is a special Sunday. It is Easter. And as we go out, Father, I pray that you would use us to share that good news that Jesus is Lord. All of these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.